pop off. First things first, I pop off. Freaks all the honeys, dummies, playboy bunnies, those wanting money. Those the ones I like, cause they don't get nothing but penetration. Unless it smells like sanitation. Garbage, I turn like doorknobs. Heart throb never. Black and ugly as ever. However, I stay coochie down to the socks. Rings and watch filled with rocks. And my jam not in your Mitsubishi. Girl, creepy when they see me. Never go creep me in they TV. As I lay down laws like Alan Copy. Stop it. If you think they're gonna make a profit, don't see my ones, don't see my guns. Get it? Now tell your friends, Papa, hit it. Then split it in two as I flow with the junior mafia. I don't know what the hell's stopping ya. I'm clocking ya. Versace shade watching ya. Once you grin, I'm in. Game begins. Uh, first I talk about how I dress. This and diamond necklaces. Stretch Lexuses. The sex is just immaculate. From the back, I get deeper and deeper. Help you reach the climax that your man can't make. Call him, tell him you be home real late. That's in the break, huh? I got that good love, girl, you didn't know I got that good love, girl, you didn't know She's sick of that song on how it's so long Thought he worked his until I handled my biz There I is, uh, major pain like Damon Wayne Slow down dirty even like his brother Keenan Steven Don't leave your girl around me, true player for real Act Puff Dad G, uh, you ringing bells with bags from Chanel Baby Ben is traded in your Hyundai XL uh, Fully equipped, CD changer with the cell She beat me, meet me at 12 uh, Where you at, flipping job, playing car notes While I'm swimming in your women like the best stroke Right stroke, left stroke was the best stroke Death stroke, tongue all down the throat uh -huh. Nothing left to do but send her home to you I'm through, can you sing the song for me, boo? Uh -huh. I got that good love, girl, you didn't know uh -huh. Uh -huh. I got that good love, girl, you didn't know uh -huh. Uh -huh. I got that good love, girl, you didn't know Let me get that Lex, the sex, wetter than aquarium, it's flashing, they get the accent, hoop, flow, and layer jets, and coops, my one second, you ain't know that I be macking, uh, the extra set of keys, the 30 G's, them trips to Belize, had you living on your knees, uh, not to mention the laced out crib in Dallas, the 40 room palace, sick of the spalace, uh, uh, what, uh, Make it happen. You got your ass caught on your soul was fire. From the Honda Passport or the MP. What if you see? Then I miss you. I blow up spots like little sisters. Grind, grit your teeth. Grind, bite your nails. Trip to keep the cool like Murray. My killers be the most beautiful. Junior Mafia click thick like loop dancers. Playin Grab your gats. Honey, take a glass at the look to one. Pull it over in the land. Over playing Big Willie style with the chauffeur. You know what I mean? Stack the green, read all the sweet of A fool act up, make the maggot hard to find. Players, grab your dick if you love hip hop. Ladies, rub your dick if you love big pop. Got your open off the world, I say because. Players, grab your dick if you love hip hop. Ladies, rub your dick if you love big pop. Got your open off the world, I say because. Uh, uh, I'm surrounded by How you living, Biggie Small? I'm surrounded by criminals. How you living, Biggie Small? I'm surrounded by criminals. Heavy rollers, even the shites, the individuals. Smoking, skunking, mad fillies. Beating down Billy badasses. Cracks and stacks and masses. Uh -huh. 
If robbery's a class, but I pass it. Things get drastic. I'm burying your mouth. Big Papa never softening. Take you to the church, rob the preacher from the offering. Leave the fool coughing up blood in his pockets like rabbit ears. Covet the wife, clean next for the kids' tears. Versace wear, Moschino on my missus. She whipping my round, counting my watch, thinking I'm riches. Just the way players, just the way players, just the way players play. All day, every day, I don't know what else to say. I've been robbing fools since running, I was singing, here we go. Snatching ropes at the Roxy homeboy, you didn't know my flow. Detrimental to you. Usually roll for self, I have sun, ride shotgun My mind's my nine, my pen's my Mac 10 My target, all you have seen who started rapping Junior Mafia, Steve, no people know the half Caviar for breakfast, champagne, bubble baths Running up in pretty hundreds constantly The smalls, baby, who you thought it was supposed to be Players, rub you, if you love hip-hop Ladies, rub you, Yeah it's Thursday Friday Eve that uh, music you were hearing just a few minutes ago is an old tape. I know you're saying tape. Yeah, cassette tape. I'm doing a, uh, another part of my business. It's uh, called Conversions. And we're going to be eventually converting all types of media to other types of media. Uh, but right now we're starting off with uh, cassette tapes. So... If you have uh, any cassette tapes, you know, you got some old memories and things like that. Uh, maybe your, your family member recorded something and you want to have that as a, a, as a keepsake. Uh, I have a friend right now that uh, is actually, her father was a, a minister. And so she uh, had tapes of his sermons and she brought those tapes over so we can have them converted. Now, you probably heard the, the quality of the sound of the tapes. I even converted my 1984 Purple Rain tape, and that's 32 years old, and the quality still came out excellent. So we're doing uh, one tape for five, two for eight, three for ten, ten for 25. And what, what we do, we're converting them to an a MP3 format, and then we'll give them to you like that. Or if you want us to put them on the CD, then we'll put them on the CD. But realize we're not going to put the breaks and all that in. Uh, tape was tape, so tape was continuous. So any format we give you will be continuous. Hopefully, and uh, get some people to participate in that. Uh, so we're, with that said, we're going to get into the business segment of the show. I am Richard Robinson owner and operator of RPC Computing and the host of the No PC Show. Uh, reach out to us. Not only do we do computers, uh, well, tapes, we do computers also. Uh, repairs, upgrades, all your computer needs. Uh, one day we're going to actually get us a, a nice shop and, and all that you see here on the screen. That's my vision of my eventual business the way I would like it to be and uh, hopefully with your support we can all reach that something sweet bakery miss Terry 708-781-5220 cakes cookies catering I have had the opportunity to enjoy her uh, pastries uh, a few times and both times they were delicious reach out to her uh, as you see on the screen minimum 48 hour notice required uh, on your order, you know, let's be fair to everybody. Rochelle Millsap is a Remax real estate agent. She's now doing it full time again. I know she was doing multiple things, but as black folks, we're going to realize you may need to have two or three different sources of income to make it work the way you want it to work and not be stuck on somebody's corporate plantation. Karen, Kevin Character King, uh, he's got a CD on iTunes and CD Baby called I Am Character. He has a book of poetry uh, called Character's Book of Poetry available on Amazon. As always, I'm going to share a little bit of his uh, stuff so you can get an idea of, uh, of what he's working with. <laughs> <laughs> I see 
see new faces in old places. Come on. Places I grew up called home. And these faces in old places are faces not of my skin tone. Yet they come from various places, do these faces, to purchase themselves new spaces in these vacant places, which have now been renovated, upgraded, upscaled, and updated. That's Kevin Character, King. Spoken word artist, uh, 773-364-0491. He's available for all types of functions. Uh, if you're putting together an event and you're looking for poets, he can assist you or he can do it himself. I'm actually going to work on something with Kevin to actually put something together where we can actually present it. And maybe that'll be our first event that we try to sponsor here at the No PC Show where we can get some brothers and sisters together and uh, support some of these poets and, and, and do something with that. King's Cubby Daycare, located 8825 South Colfax in Chicago, 773-437-5108. Mondays through Fridays, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., accepting children 6 weeks to 12 years old. Uh, if you're looking for daycare, reach out. I know her personally. She's my sister. She's Kevin's wife. And, and, and it just doesn't stop with the amazement right there. They also have a son uh, by the name of Sharif, and he's got an album out, and the album is self-titled called Sharif. He's got some good sounds and tunes on there. Uh, and I'm not, not saying that just because he's my nephew, but uh, he's got a nice mixture of everything for, for everybody. Uh, let me give you a quick listen here. I know you want to see me. Go home alone. I'm done waiting. I know you want to see me go home alone. I'm done waiting. And this hurts so bad I can't breathe. Okay, okay. I'm just going to give you a sample. But uh, definitely help that young man out. Check out the CD. It's available on I, Amazon and iTunes. Uh, it's called Sharif. I, I think it's doing pretty good so far. But uh, it's, it's never too much support. And we want to support our young people and all our business people. And with that, let's get into the show tonight. Uh, First, I, I want to share something because we're going to do a, a show on Tuesday. Uh, it, the, the video I'm going to show you really disturbed me, and I was going to the end of the end to show you, but I'm going to show you this, and then we'll, we'll get into the show. And it's about the emasculating of our young men. And if you haven't seen this video, you'll probably see it somewhere on, on the Internet at some point, but it, it was just very disturbing to me. So I'm, I'm going to share this with you real quick. And then we'll get into the show. He wears his clothes like that because he can watch him walk. His pants like that because he can watch him walk. Watch him walk. Watch him. Watch him walk. I love the outfit. So how did you do that outfit, sir? Oh, please tell the please tell the camera how you made that. I put this one here. Uh huh. And then I put this bed around. Right. And then I snap this part together. Okay, and what? So, what kind of fabric is that that you're using? It this looks soft. Soft fabric. And oh, it looks like um, like an animal. Pre it looks beautiful. I love the two pieces. I love the high collar. It's very beautiful. Thank you. Let me see you walk it out. 
He wears his fashion like that because he can. Watch him walk. His fashion like that because he can. Oh my! Fashion, fashion. His walk, his walk. He makes what he wants. He can make anything. Fashion. What the hell? What the hell is going on in this video? Is this woman wrong? Because it, it, this video is, is sparking a lot of debate and it pissed off a lot of men. And, and, and since I saw a whole lot of reaction from a lot of men, Tuesday's show is going to be called The Emasculation of Our Young Black Boys. Uh, so look for that Tuesday at 7.30. I know that's usually the in the news show, but we're going we're gonna to take it back to the format for a second to discuss something like that. But tonight's show, we're talking about the brothers and the sisters and the divide. And uh, this came came about, I was I was watching, I, I can't remember what I was watching offhand, but it was about black more black women uh, marrying white guys and, and exploring the options. I would say exploring the options. And like we always talking about, you see see this a lot on TV now, and and it's almost like they're pushing it down our throats. And all the bleeding ladies have to be with a white man, and then everybody's got their psychology on it. Is there anything wrong with dating a white person? No, if the, if that's your preference. Uh, I, I I think the underlying thing here is our our women starting to more so identify with white men, the white culture, because what they're doing in lives, in their lives, kind of lines up more with the white culture, with the, the power structure. And that's kind of where they're at. I, I, have, I have a video I'm going to share with you, and then we'll, we'll talk a little more. Want to start an uncomfortable conversation? How's this for an icebreaker? Black women should not be held hostage to the failings of black men. They should marry outside of their race. This according to Stanford law professor Ralph Richard Banks, black women should not marry down. They should marry out. This comes from a new book he has authored called Is Marriage for White People? And Professor Banks joins us on The Filter. Rick, thank you very much for being here. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. The premise at the beginning, why black women are so unlikely to marry. Why is that? Well, black women are unlikely to marry in part because black men are faring so poorly. Uh, as we speak, one in ten black men in their 20s or early 30s are in prison across the country. Uh, one in four will go to prison. At the other end of the spectrum, nearly twice as many black women as men graduate from college. This leaves black women with very few partners. So basically you're pointing out that black women face the thinnest pool of same race partners in the country. But I'm By sure. Far. But I'm sure there would be a number of black men that would argue that point. Well, a number of black men have argued that point. Uh, and in fact, one of the things I wanted to do with my book is to try to get to the bottom of this. And again, based on national data, uh, the best available information, uh, it simply is the case that black women are outpacing black men along a number of dimensions, educationally, professionally. Uh, lots of black men are quite simply uh, not able uh, to be the type of partners that women want. Are you saying the only way for a black woman to get married is to marry someone who is not black? Well, that's not the only way. Uh, I am saying that uh, uh, if more black women married across racial lines, uh, that would be good for them because more women would have uh, stable and enduring relationships. They'd have better relationships, in fact, than they might have with the black men who are available. And they would also benefit the black race because more African-American couples would likely wed as well. Are you suggesting that black men can never overcome the obstacles which you have pointed out? Well, I'm saying many black men do. Uh, so there are lots of black men who are doing just fine. Uh, but it's also the case, and this is a, a national tragedy, I think, that you know, black men are in many ways the most disadvantaged group of people in our society. Uh, in terms of incarceration, in terms of unemployment, in terms of marginality along all sorts of dimensions, uh, black men in the aggregate are not faring well. Uh, and that's something that the book tries to come to terms with. Is this dude just trying to sell books? 
I don't know if if you were offended by anything he said, but I I guess I can always find a way to be uh, offended, especially by, by by brother who who put this together, Professor Banks, and yeah, he went to school and he's been trained up in the society. So when he uh, makes this statement that black men are faring poorly. They're f faring po poorly by the white power structure standards, the standards that say you must get in line, you must go to school, you must come and work for me and be humiliated and down trotted. You must deal with the false reality that we put out and you must toe the line. That's what happens in, in corporate America. That's what happens to a, a lot of our women once they go out and they get their degrees. And now they want the man to fall in line also with that. And that's and that's one of the, the biggest divides I see. A lot of black men don't want to go and work in corporate America. They don't want to put up with the crap, the bull, the humiliation. You think it's bad out here on the streets. It's it's bad in, in these corporations, just as bad. It's a mental, stressful situation. But since a lot of women decide, hey, well, I went to school. I got my two, three degrees, and, and this works great for me. I don't know why you can't get in line, because we can't get in line. We lined up on the boats centuries ago. Maybe we don't want to get in the line, but this this seems to be a hey, something that a, a lot of women can kind of fall fall into when it comes to the type of man that they want to associate themselves with and what they see as the vision it's not the the man's vision it's the woman's vision and so it's just a requirement now that if you can fall in line with my vision then this works unless you're a millionaire if you're a sports player all bets are off I'm rolling with you. That's sorry, fellas. That's that's just the way it is. Uh, let me share this other video with you. Hopefully, this is the right one. More than it's the history of America that creates the wins. More than forty percent of Black women in America right now are single. It's a pretty big number. There's still plenty of debate over the reasons why that is. One author though says the solution could be as simple as Black women dating. White men looking outside their race to find a life partner. Check out the title of the book, though. Don't bring a white boy home. Okay, we're going to tackle that. All right. And Karen Langhorn Foland joins us live from Washington, D.C. All right. Welcome, Karen. Hi, Rochelle. How are you? Oh, I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Okay. Now, just so we can have a discussion and get as many ears to listen as possible, I need you to explain the title of the book for anybody who might be put off, and then we can go for it. Explain that title. <laughs> well, the full title is Don't Bring Home a White Boy and Other Notions That Keep Black Women from Dating Out. And it comes from, I think, a lot of us who were born between like 1960 and 1970. 75, around the time that schools were being integrated and so on. Our parents moved to white neighborhoods, we went to school with white kids, we worked with white people, but there was a line drawn when it came to romance. So it, it comes from a statement that many black daughters have heard from their parents or in their community, do everything you want, just don't bring one home. Okay, what prompted you to write this book? Well, I am interracially married myself. Uh, my husband of uh, five years is an Irish American. And I remember around the time we started dating, the reaction that I got from some of my girlfriends and some of the comments that they had made over the years about um, dating outside the race, about dating white men in particular. Um, and, and I started thinking about those reactions and those comments and, and, as you said, the fact that so many black women are single and looking. And it made me kind of want to examine what the notions are, what the ideas were whether it's really true that they're not interested in us, whether whether slavery is a, is, a, is a good justification in the 21st century for not dating interracially, what our definitions of manhood are, um, whether there's a negative impact on children, and so on and so forth. These are all some of the notions that I heard black women express about dating white. Um, are, when you're telling women to, to broaden their horizons, are you talking about this, and I'm just going to be blunt, strictly as a numbers game? 
if you know what I mean, when we're talking about the dating pool, is it a numbers game? Well, it can be. I mean, certainly, you know, the, the latest census numbers suggest that there are almost two million more black American women than there are black American men. And then there are other discrepancies and disparities in education and incarceration rates and things like that that have an impact on the number of available black men, certainly. Um, but to me, it's more about just feeling free to expand your options in any direction that you want to. I did tackle the black-white relationship primarily in this book, seem, mainly because that seems to be where the biggest contention is. Mm -hmm. But my advice is, you know, I think black American women are among the most beautiful, intelligent, smart, got it going on people on the planet. And there's no reason why they shouldn't have as many choices as any other woman of any other ethnicity. And they should date a rainbow if they want to. You are married to an African American woman. Yes, I'm married to an African American woman. I remember distinctly a conversation I had with my father when I was in elementary school where I went up to him one day, of course I didn't understand everything that has to deal with racism or race relations at that point in my life, but I did realize that I was attracted to, in more than a social way, women of all ethnicities. And I remember distinctly going to my father and saying, Dad, would you mind if I did marry a black woman one day? And his response to me was, as long as she looks good, I don't care what color she is. Um, if you ask me if it was like a conscious choice to pick a darker skinned woman versus like a lighter skinned woman, for me, not really. It wasn't an effort to go find the deepest, darkest chocolate sister out there and get the full on, for real deal, you know, straight from the motherland. And I didn't think that that defined blackness to me. You know, you're not more ethnic if you're dark. It's just, that's how to be who Joni was. Um, but when you look at her, there was nothing about that color of her skin that defined her. I, you know what, it's, it's really amazing because we have these conversations and a lot of my light-skinned sisters with like not as curly, kinky hair as we do, they're like, wait, what's up with that? Like all, all the white guys like the dark-skinned girls with the curly, kinky hair, so what's up with that? Like, I, is, there, is there a preference in terms of like dating uh, black women that there's, a, sh there's a, like, a, a preference in terms of like darkness and, and hair curliness or is it just kind of like you just like what you like? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, ultimately, at the end of the day, ever since I was a little kid, I knew that I was attracted to dark skin. The so why? darker, the better. No, I'm curious. As, that like, is just a, a that's just a, that's just a personal thing. Like I always, even when dating white women, it was always dating tan white women. Yeah, the women then, who stayed like in the tanning beds all day long, that's who you like? <laughs> but then ultimately turned into like the, the curly hair I really love. Like that was just the end of it for me. The curlier the better. I love the kinkiness. I love the wildness to it. I love waking up and it's just all over your face. I just... To ask you this, because I hear like, oh. <laughs> will you marry me? Yes, a hundred times yes. <laughs> This may be your last weekend, <laughs> oh um, but I want this to be the start of the rest of our lives together. And Alexis, will you marry me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow, that caught me off guard. <laughs> he wears his clothes like... <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> well, because like, I don't want to be too appropriate on camera, but <laughs> wow. Here, <laughs> look at that, everybody. <laughs> oh, wow. This uh, is not a new phenomenon. We've always known that white men are attracted to sisters. I mean, we knew that straight off the boat. Uh, one of the sisters made a comment about slavery and does this play a role on this type of relationship being taboo. She stood right up and bring a white home a white boy, which she wound up marrying. And I know that's a touchy subject for a lot of parents and we're not trying to make this racial, but it is a little bit of a topic. A lot of sisters are marrying white guys. And it, it seems to be more of a particular type of white guy. Like I say, a businessman or somewhere along those lines. He's probably got the same amount of degrees, 
probably on the same career path as she she is on. And this may not be for a, a a lot of women. I know there's a lot of sisters and a lot of brothers who are staying uh, within their race, which doesn't make it a racial thing. I can remember a time in my life where I, I dated a few white women, but in my in my mind, and and we had conversations, and I had to let them know I could never marry a white person. It's cool to hang out and we can be cool and, and have a great time. But from a cultural standpoint, I don't like your culture. There's nothing in your culture that says I'm going to be welcome there or anything along those lines. I was brought here as a slave to America. A lot of people may be, have gotten past that. I, for, for whatever reason, I have not gotten past that. Doesn't bother you to see stars and, and everybody else with their their person. It's it's your own identity. I I don't identify on on that level. When I thought about who I would marry, I always said I was going to marry a black woman. Cause of nothing else, she, culturally she can identify with me. Culturally, she can understand me from from the same perspective of racism and how it works in America. She won't ever be able to put blinders on to the situation because even our brothers and sisters that do try to put blinders on, they know they can't keep them off for long. They play the game. We wear the mask. So why why is this, this such a, a, a hot topic? Is because this is the way of the world and and are people really getting married? Or it's just some type of convenient situation of you're a star, I'm a star. I can come up if I if I'm with you. And and how does it affect everybody else? It I mean, I could care less if if you love that person, then then that's you. But if you are switching over because this is your economic dream, he's on the same page then that, that, that's a problem for me. I have a problem with all these athletes that have black mothers and then they run off and they grab them a, a Kim Kardashian type or whatever. You know, it's that certain type that you always see if they not white, they Filipino or Asian and they wind up spending all this money and donating all this money and winding up broke. And so a, a lot of the sisters have a problem with that when they see you, that the person that they support, probably all through school and everything to help you get to a point, and then you turn around and you do what you do. Kanye did it. He had a black girlfriend. It's a, a, a lot of women that hold that against them. And, and I look at the brothers like, I wouldn't marry him. Sorry, it's nothing against against you all. Uh Culturally, I'm just, I'm, like I said, for me personally, it was me maybe trying to hold on to my culture. The, the last strand of dignity America allows me to have is me. That's what they took from us during slavery. Uh, one time it happened, a friend of mine, she says, would you have a problem with me dating a white man? I said, that's you dating a white man. It ain't me dating a white man. If that's what you like, go ahead. I, I could care less. It's, 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 it's not, not racist for me. There was a show, uh, what's this guy's name? I, uh, Anderson Cooper or something. And he had Jackie Reed and some other folks on there talking about uh, some things. I, I want to bring in uh, the author of this book, because uh, it's a fascinating book. His name is uh, Rick Banks. The book is Is Marriage for White People? And uh, it really got me thinking about this whole topic. Hey. Rick joins us now. Rick, thanks for being with us. So, it's a pleasure. Thank you. So, I mean, your book I found really eye-opening because I hadn't really given much thought to, to all this until I started talking to Jackie about it. How big an issue is this? 
It's a, it's a huge issue. Uh, African-American women are the most unmarried group of women in the country. 70% of black women are unmarried, uh, and the racial gap in marriage extends across the socioeconomic spectrum. Uh, so it's not only poor women, it's college-educated black women as well, who are about twice as likely to be unmarried as their white counterparts. Is there a stigma? I mean, do you look askance at, a, at an African-American woman who is dating a white guy? No. No. I, no, I don't, but, but there are friends of mine who do, and I know black women who, who do and black men who do. Right. More I common. think black women are more sensitive about mm -hmm. seeing black men with white women. Why is that? Um, because there's such a shortage in yeah. our eyes of black men to choose from yeah. in the first place. I don't think black men care so much about it, but I think for black women, it's a much more sensitive issue so, to think, see black men with women of other races. Well, since you say you only date black men, do you feel that way when you see a black man with a, a white woman? A little. And what's the, what is that feeling? Explain um, that. It's, I, I really don't know if I can explain it. It's just kind of like, you know, you know, if you can put that into words. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it, you know, it's just because of, you know, being a journalist myself and knowing that black men date outside of their race more than any other group. And mm -hmm. black women are very loyal to black men. We are least likely to date outside of our That's race. Right. Yeah. And yeah. it's just... There are a lot of black men who you meet who have a lot of issues with black women. You can probably find that uh, full interview online somewhere. It was the uh, Anderson Cooper show from, from a couple of years ago. And uh, I, I was glad she could just, just be honest. It, it made it look, if you notice some of the white women in the audience, it uh, kind of made them a, a little uncomfortable, especially one that was sitting with the, with the brother. And I don't know if it's done to make make them feel uncomfortable. I can, I can remember I went on a date at the Water Tower with this uh, this uh, Caucasian young, young lady, and there were what four four or five sisters sitting behind us in, in the same theater, and, and yeah, they was giving it to us. Blah 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 blah. blah. For me. I just didn't like the disrespect that I'm on a date and, and you you got a lot of attitude, you know. It was uh keep it to yourself. But I understood where they were coming from. Uh like I say, I've I've dated a, f a few white women. Culturally I, I just saw nothing be beyond that. But then to the sisters I, I, I did say, Hey, if I ask you out or ask you out or ask you out I don't fit your criteria. So if if I don't fit your criteria, just like the women are saying now, the brothers don't fit their criteria, do we have a right to be mad or did they have a right to be mad? As Jackie says, you know, there's a shortage of available men. A lot of black men are incarcerated, married to white women, gay. So there's a, there's a whole system that's cutting the short of of black men so say that all that cut them in half and then you look at the monetary values of it if she's saying she's making a six-figure salary and you're not making a six-figure salary say she's making a hundred and twenty thousand and you're making thirty forty thousand sorry we, we can't be together unless you let me wear the pants and you believe in what i believe in or maybe that's not what what it is. Maybe that brother just wants to have his own business, do his own work, make something available for his kids at the end of his life. Yeah, I know that's ad admirable, but how are we going to go to these trips and all this if I got to spend all my money? Funny how it becomes day day money. When you marry this, it's our money. But this is just something I, I just wanted to touch base on it. Uh, it. It was sparked by the Jill Scott video I actually saw where she was talking about it. And the brother was like, oh, Jill, why, why do you jump on this subject? Uh, there's so many other things you could tackle. And that's the problem in America. We can't talk about, uh, excuse, excuse us, us, black people, can't have an honest discussion with white folks. Malcolm X said a long time ago, the only time that this thing can can work or be resolved is the black man can sit at the table and say his true feelings. And then the white man can sit at the table and say his true feelings. Now, 
You can have true feelings and they can be wrong. Slavery was wrong. Jim Crow was wrong. A lot of things that they did in society were wrong. Also, as Malcolm says, if you stab me in the back and pull the knife out six inches, that's not healing. If you pull it all the way out, that's not healing. The healing starts when you make recompense for what you did to me. And not no tap dance. We're going to give you this. We're going to do this. No. Real change. Honest dialogue. That's all we're trying to do here on the No PC Show. We're not trying to hide behind any type of mask. You can hit me up at the show 1965 at yahoo.com with your comments. You can go to my YouTube page. When we post the videos, you can even subscribe. It's called the show on YouTube. And I, I look forward to any rebuttals. The if you want to leave a, a message, I guess you can text it to me, seven seven three four one six two nine five five. We're not hiding from, from anybody. It's no PC show. We didn't invent PC. You all did. Love, peace. So we out of here. The pack packs and Cadillacs, there are pimp cats in the act. Watch my money stack. Knives in the store, locks in the bag. Maximum, you want to see it more. Hey, rap, professional, confess.